So since I've been doing almost daily content on this channel, I've started to look more into local news, and I'm sure many of you have noticed this change in my content. And one of my favorite series to look into, to revisit time after time, even if I'm not going to make a video about it, is the series called Project Baltimore, where the local news station, WBFF Fox Baltimore, goes over the problems in government, the public schools, with the police, and all kinds of issues that are impacting the city, and and of course, Baltimore is indicative of what we can expect with long-term democratic rule on the local level. Now, while this series is often depressing, while this series is often troubling and informative, I will say there are occasional hopeful, optimistic segments that they put forward. And one of them is this segment that actually only has 860 views on YouTube right now at the time of me recording this video. And that definitely has to change because it shows us how effort and ingenuity can help even the poorest school districts, districts with a 100% poverty rate, achieve like the wealthier districts in the state of Maryland. So buckle up, get ready, because I'm going to inject you with a little bit of hope. But before we get into that, I just want to say thank you to everybody. Sign up over at actualjusticewarrior.com slash join. I will give me the money. Give you give me the money. Okay. And thank you to the podcast listeners, Apple, Spotify, and Google's podcasting platform. In the poorest school in Washington County, yet it's on par with some of the best schools in the state. As Project Baltimore's Chris Papps explains, there's a secret to success at Salem Avenue Elementary. So as you heard, one of the poorest school districts in all of the state of Maryland, somewhere where 100% of the students are below the poverty line, has achieved stunning success due to the hard work of their teachers. And as you've also heard, this local news person does not know how to pronounce the word Salem. There's a secret to success at Salem Avenue Elementary. Salem, Salem, Salem. Now you might say it's a regional thing to pronounce Salem in that god-awful manner, but the thing is, what you don't understand is that Salem is actually named for the city of Jerusalem, so no, it is not in any way Salem University. You better check that. It's a great segment otherwise, but I am going to zero in on those petty details because that's what I do on this channel. One week before the start of school, equipped with maps and student lists. Hannah's in your home, home. right? Yep. Okay. Like the one we're heading to next, I had her or his sister in third grade, so she's gonna be a fifth grader this year. <laughs> Teachers from Salem Avenue Elementary hit the streets <laughs> for what's known as the Blitz. So I'm not going to lie, I'm so cynical, so jaded when it comes to our public school system, when it comes to the state of Maryland, the fact that this is on Project Baltimore, that when I first heard about the Blitz, I thought it was that thing that was featured heavily in The Wire, where they actually send people out in order to get kids to go to school on that one specific date that allows them to secure federal funding for attendance, and then they completely abandon the kids. However, this is not the case. What they're actually doing is meeting and greeting the poor people that attend this school, building a rapport with them and getting them interested in education. Hi, Hi Rainer. Hi. How are you? Is Kimberly back there too? Hi, Kimberly. Molly Adams <laughs> and Stacy Yost teach third grade at Salem Avenue. Together, they have 30 students on their list. That's 30 homes. To visit. And as you've heard, a lot of these teachers have had older siblings and whatnot, so they're actually building long-lasting connections with the students and trying to connect them with the school and with education overall, which is what is likely leading to their elevated success compared to what you would expect from them. Principal Thomas Garner created the Blitz in 2012. Yeah. He wanted teachers to see firsthand how their students live and the challenges they face. Because at Salem Avenue Elementary, every student faces challenges. According to federal data, 100% of the students live in poverty. We got great kids here, we got great parents here, but really teachers normally these walls protect them from the outside world. This is such a good idea. It builds so much of a connection between the education system and the community and the students, the principal should get a medal for this. And I'm being genuine about this because it's not just the teachers experiencing the poverty that their students are living under. It's the fact that it has proved positive in the results, even with a group of students that again, 100% of them are in poverty. If you're impoverished, a passion for education can help lead you to success later in life. And this principal figured this out 
over 10 years ago, and he's been implementing this program, and his school is performing on the top levels of the state of Maryland. If there's anything that should give you hope in our school system for poor kids, it should be this, because it turns out it's not poverty, it's not circumstances out of our control, it's effort and ingenuity. We're gonna have bad days just like everyone else. They may not have power on a day, they may not have great weather when they're walking a mile to school. These are things that they have to understand. Hagerstown is a blue collar town of about 43,000 people with a higher poverty rate than Baltimore City. And many of the families who live here are dealing with addiction. The city sits at the intersection of interstates 70 and 81 known as the heroin highway. So yeah, as you heard this town, blue collar town, the people in this town, poorer on average than the people in the city of Baltimore. And by the way, if you think that this school somehow gets more funding than the Baltimore public school system, then obviously you haven't been paying attention to this channel because the Baltimore public school system is the third most funded public school system in the entire country. In fact, this school in particular, Salem Avenue Elementary, gets $15,073 per pupil. Baltimore public schools get almost six thousand dollars more per student at the third highest per student spending in the nation of twenty one thousand dollars a six thousand dollar difference and look at what these teachers are doing as a requirement set forth by the principal and by the way the reason that they can do this is because they don't have the bureaucracy and the corruption and all of the problems that the baltimore public school system has that prevents these kind of changes from being implemented you have all these barriers being put up by the teachers union to prevent extra work like this but this kind of extra work just one day before classes started can be absolutely crucial in getting teachers to understand the problems that their students face mail the rapport with their parents and getting them interested and engaged in education i think it has made them more humanistic i think it's also really in some weird ways really helped them push your expectations higher you know i'm a firm believer that you can't feel sorry for anyone Feel sorry for someone never has made them stronger. And that's what I mean, by the way, about attitude versus poverty being the key determining factor. The principal who came up with this says he's a firm believer that you can't feel sorry for anyone. You can't say, oh, well, that's all you can do based on your circumstances. You have to push people to do better. You can understand their situation, but having expectations is absolutely crucial in order to have success. There are roughly 1,400 public schools in Maryland. 98 have one. 100% poverty, meaning they receive extra federal funding to help low-income students. At Salem Avenue, every student is eligible for free breakfast and lunch, and any extra money goes towards books. The school has placed a strong emphasis on literacy, teaching children to love reading. Remember when we covered the honor roll student at a Baltimore high school, that school system that felt sorry for her, that they didn't teach her math because they thought math would be too difficult? Well, when she got to college, if you'll recall, she ended up on academic probation because she didn't know the basics that she needed to know in order to get into that university. Now, luckily, that military academy actually designed a curriculum to get her up to speed to teach her the things that she should have learned in the Baltimore public school system, and eventually she she ended up not only succeeding, but reaching near the top of her class in her military academy. But the only reason she was able to do that is because the military academy believed in her in a way that the Baltimore public schools just don't believe in the students. Again, these students are poorer than the students of Baltimore County. They're poorer than the students in Baltimore City public schools. They get less funding per pupil than Baltimore City public schools, yet the students are outperforming the state averages. They're not in one of those school districts, even though this could easily be excused, that has every Every single student not proficient in reading or not proficient in math. Instead, they're leading the pack in the state, despite the fact that they're not only poor, they not only have broken families, but they also have heroin addiction running rampant. They have one of the epicenters of heroin, Heroin Highway, right nearby. That's where their school district is situated. Every single thing is working against these students, but because this principal has that attitude and he has his teachers 
instill that attitude in those students, they succeed. According to the most recent state test scores, 45.4% of students at Salem Avenue are proficient in English, a full point higher than the Maryland average. And in a state where the poorest areas tend to have the lowest rated schools, Salem is proving that doesn't need to be the case. Now look, the 45% proficiency doesn't sound good, but remember, you're comparing it to the state average, and they're a full point above that state average. So yes, I want the students to do better. Yes, I want America's education system to do better, but we do have a poor state of education in this country, but these guys are ahead of the pack, so that should be respected. But there's actually more positive data related to this. This is the only school with 100% poverty to earn four out of five stars on the Maryland report card, which measures overall performance based on factors, including attendance, test scores, and curriculum. Nearly all the other schools in Maryland with 100% poverty earn one or two stars. That's right. They're the only school with this level of poverty, 100% poverty, that has earned four stars. Almost all the other ones, two or below. Most of them are at one star. And why? Why were they able to do this? It wasn't extra funding. We just went over the money and compared it to Baltimore City Public Schools. What it was is an attitude, a belief that these students can achieve, and a belief and an expectation that teachers should meet them where they're at, but also push them towards reading, push them towards being successful. Expect from these students Students, rather than feel sorry for them, rather than excuse them, rather than spend all your time begging for more money and saying, oh, well, we can't afford to do better, so we're just going to let your kids perpetually fail and hope that eventually granddaddy federal government or granddaddy state government drops a big enough check for us to work. Obviously, these schools can succeed with the resources they have. Obviously, sometimes even when you get the federal support for the breakfast and the lunch, that does not contaminate your kids to failure. Even in a hotbed of opium, these students can succeed above the state average, top 55 percentile in the state of Maryland, and outperform each and every one of the schools with 100% poverty. Look, on this channel, I talk a lot about my preferred policy preferences, how I think changes in the law, changes in attitude will work practically if they were to be implemented. But this school district and this principal, they didn't talk about their preferred policy preferences preferences. They didn't talk about how theoretically there's a light at the end of the tunnel. They decided to act. They decided to show people the way. They decided to show people the light and the proof in the pudding is in the taste. And even though 100% of these kids are eating disgusting federally subsidized lunches, the pudding tastes quite good. Across this country, whenever you have these factors, the excuses come out. Poverty, minority student population falling behind their white counterparts, drug addiction being rampant in the area, crime, these are all used as reasons to never act in the benefit of the students, and in fact, they're used as justifications to lower the standards, because if these students aren't meeting the standards, the standards must be set by the evil capitalist class and thus bias against the poor, set by the white supremacist system and thus bias against the minority minorities, set by two parents who don't have to deal with drug addiction, thus biased against the people who would sell their kid for $20 for another hit on Heroin Highway. Well, guess what? That doesn't work. Lowering those standards doesn't help anyone. This school did not do that. This school not only didn't lower the standards, they decided that they were going to excel past the standards. They needed their kids to be able to read. Not only did they commit a huge portion of their budget to reading, but they made an effort to make the students love reading so that they'd enjoy doing it themselves so that they could be successful even after they leave the campus of Salem Avenue Elementary School. This is the way. Everywhere else that is deciding to undercut standards in order for us to have a more holistic approach is failing your students and they're failing them by design. You don't get rid of objective standards if you genuinely believe that the students are capable, given the right attitude and the right effort, of meeting those objective standards. You don't ask for a holistic woo-woo way of measuring learning unless you believe that those kids just can't learn. And I'm so proud of Salem Avenue Elementary School for rejecting that dogma, for fighting back, 
for doing community outreach, expecting more of the teachers, but never once wallowing, embracing a defeatist attitude, or feeling sorry for these students. It's the same expectations, you understand where the students come from, but you don't feel sorry for them, and when they're in the classroom, you make it your business to set them up for success, and guess what? It works. But hey, those are just my thoughts, so let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you like this video, show me by leaving a like, subscribe for more content, follow me on all my social medias, support me via the support links in the description of this video. This has been me talking about a successful school that is poorer than Baltimore in the state of Maryland. Till next time.